Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and before I get started, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, so I know you're enjoying the content. If not, thumbs down works as well, and if you like knife content and you're not already, smash that subscribe button, why don't you? Alright, today I have for you the Best Tech Knives Falco. Uh, the Falco is um, a design collaboration with uh, an, the guy's name is Kombu. K-O-M-B-O-U, and he, he's done a lot of designs with uh, Best Tech so far, and I've liked a lot of them. This one I was I was attracted to. I love that blade shape. Um, this variation comes in at $160. It's kind of a cross between their higher end and their budget line. You know, it's it's not their budget. They're offering some, some nicer materials and stuff like that. But let's get some specs out of the way real quick so you can see how big this knife is. You have an overall length of 8.5 inches. You have a blade length of 3.6 inches. So it's going to be a full-size EDC knife. You have a grip area from the front right here to the back of 4 inches. You have a thickness in the, of the scales of 0.57 inches. You have a closed width in the pocket from here to here of 1.2 inches. You have a blade stock thickness of a, a hefty 0.152 or 3.8 uh, millimeters. The thickness behind the edge, the factory edge on this, was uh, around 15, 15 thousandths or so, uh, and that's at 20 degrees per side. <clears throat> um, before giving you all my thoughts let's i'm gonna break off into some testing i tested this one very thoroughly so y'all make sure to watch that y'all should enjoy it if not y'all let me know all right we're gonna start out with some car single wall cardboard um i did sharpen up the knife it's got a super sharp edge on it um i sharpened it because the factory edge did not last long so hopefully a good sharp edge will make it better super sharp I'm going to be testing it testing sharpness periodically once it loses the super keen you know hair shaving sharp edge I'll probably use printer paper but single wall cord board That's pretty good. Now let's we'll say they had a pretty tough one here. Um, I thought they got it pretty thin, but really they had like a like one degree one here per side. So um, that's pretty good. I think. Yeah, this is sharpened at 18 degrees per side. Now, so I thinned it out a little bit, and of course that showed how thin it is behind the edge before it was like 14 thousandths. All right, let's check the sharpness. I'm hoping this does well because I really like 154 cm just didn't it just didn't do too well in the beginning check the sharpness still nice and sharp cut some leather I didn't expect the edge to be messed up so let's see let's do some some Using that tip again, wow, that that went in very easily. I barely put any pressure in that. Very nicely cut. Nice. Yep, cuts it up nicely. We're gonna do a little bit of wood shaving just to test the ergos. Basically, this is some red oak, nothing hard. But it'll definitely let me know how the ergos are and how that edge is doing. I can do it. Pretty good. From this right here, I don't know where it's coming from. Let's see. Right up in here. Uh, even though they kind of broke that edge, it's still... A hard enough edge right here to where it's digging into my hand pretty bad but 
This is with pressure cuts. It's not so bad for like a little one. Yet. There you go. Nothing pretty, but that's that. Next, we're going to do this uh, pretty thick bungee cord. Pretty tough stuff to cut if the grind's too thick. We'll do some slicing first. All right, I got some of this, um, uh, I don't know what kind of, it's like water tubing with that, it's thick, thick wall with the braided nylon in the middle, pretty stiff stuff. I uh, got different thicknesses of this. Just stuff that I've had to cut. I've used this on an AC drain. And the thicker edge, it'll have a hard time getting through it. And it went through pretty well. Alright, we'll step it up. I picked up even bigger one from my local hardware. So, and if y'all want to know where where any of the money goes from this channel, <laughs> back right back right back in it. Let's see. Urgh. Now this one's a lot harder. You got to use that whole edge. <sighs> Close. Let's see. This is when uh, blade the behind the edge thickness and and stock thickness matters when you're doing something like this whenever even when you're cutting it's barely parting and it's wanting to catch on the sidewalls so it, it was able to cut that decently well let's check the edge so far so good all right, we got three more different kinds of tubing. This one, it's got two different types of layers on it. Um, rubber, softer rubber on the outside. Then you got some kind of uh, either nylon or rope in the middle of that, maybe fiberglass rope and thicker. So this is pretty strong. I don't know what this is. Um, and then this is, is really hard plastic, uh, kind of like that pex material 3 8 inch very very I can't I can't even squeeze it in and then this one just a thick rubber and this bad boy this thing's hard so we'll start with this one push those off to the side okay I don't think I've got a slice through this let's see oh wow that's impressive because I just tried this with uh, another knife and the other knife struggled to slice it. So I'm going to this right. and try this rubber stuff. Just going to take a sharp knife to get through it. No problem whatsoever. That, that wasn't hard at all. Let's try this red stuff. You know, you might be a plumber. Decently comfortable without a glove on. Let's see if we can cut this stuff. Let's see. Yep. It's a little harder to get through, but do a nice little slice of motion and you can get through it. Yep. There you go. All right, we're going to cut up a little bit of 3 8 inch, three eighths inch twisted sisal rope. Um, we feel this edge, see if there's any, there may be just a hair, not of damage yet, maybe just a little bit of a chip or something right up in this area. Could be dirt, let's see if it, if I can feel it on the paper.
still clean. Let me see, that almost feels like something right up in. No. Try that one more time. It might have been because it was further away on the front. Okay, yep, still sharp. Let's cut a little bit of this sisal rope, Cedric Nata style. I've used my knife far in the past, so there you go, just a little bit of sisal rope. Let's clean this off. And let's check the edge in the front up there where I was cutting. Right, okay. Maybe a little bit of uh, snagging going on. Let's see one more time. Eh. I'd still call that really sharp. Got some different strength zip ties, 120 pounder, 75 pound, 250s, and a 25. Let's, let's do a little bit of this one. I'll just try to cut it like this. Definitely not the right tool for the job, but hey. So no problem with the 25 pound. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can cut it like this. Yeah, that was easy. And let's just pop it. I'm gonna pop the edge. Let's see if I see the damage. Not so far. Let's see if I cut the 75. This one's a bit thicker, as you can see, and the hundred pounds a bit thick. Yeah, no problem. And for the last one, let's see if we can pop it. Um, I'll try to slice it. I don't think I'll be able to slice it, but if I can do it safely. Let's see. Yeah, I didn't think so. Zip ties are very hard to slice, like underneath. Let's see if I can pop it. This one's tough. Let's see. Am I getting anywhere with it? Yeah, got a nice little chunk. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. There's some zip ties. Let's check the edge now. Let me wipe it off. We'll check it next. We're going to do some moderate spine wax just to check out that lock it's titanium liner lock and I'm holding it on the sides trying to be safe I'd say uh, that's pretty solid I was I was hitting it pretty darn hard see the marks left in there was hurting my hand but I'd say that that's a pass lock up 50% where it was before no stick they definitely got that geometry down all right we're gonna test the edge before the next test it's still pretty darn good might have a few you got a, a small catch right there other than that, it's still nice and sharp. I don't think it would shave hair, but still acceptable. Okay, we got this Romex right here. Um, not those copper wires aren't aren't that thick, and most knives don't have much of an issue with this. So let's see how it does. I'm gonna basically baton it through this with um, with a piece of wood because I don't want to ruin. The spine let's see let's go about right there all right it might be a little loud so you might want to cover your ears oh 
Ooh, that did great. <laughs> it went flying, but let's see if I can get that piece. All right, here we go. Nice clean cut. And let's see if we got any damage. Hold on, let me feel first. No, really noticeable. Let's see if I got flashlight. And so we can see if it's if it's reflecting light. That means you know usually if there's a dull spot, it'll ref well, not usually it'll reflect light if there's a chip or roll. It's kind of hard to to get this on camera though. Let's see. Uh, I think my light is about to go out. Okay, well, we'll test the edge in the next one. Before the final test, which at least I think is going to be the final test, we're going to test the edge. Still good. All right. We got this thick piece of copper. And we're just going to shave some, see how it does shaving copper. I like doing this test. See how well it bites still? Let's see if we can get some light. See, it's it's taken off a good little chunk of that. No noticeable damage. And got a good little bit out of there. Let's go a little bit more. This is a uh, copper grounding cable. Tell you what, it's doing a good job of shaving it. Now the edge might be done, but look at that. I took a nice little chunk out of there. I mean, copper is soft. So, you know, if I try to do that with some stainless wire some galvanized wire then i'd probably have a good bit of damp not some rolls and some and this isn't my knife so i don't want to destroy it and i'm not seeing any any major you know maybe let's see still feels sharp let's see Yep, that's nice. Look at that. I, I literally feel nothing. That's that's really nice. So there you go. I think that's enough. Um, knife still super smooth. Let's see. No play left or right, up or down, none. And the lock moved over a little bit, but I was striking it pretty hard on here. So there you go. Now for the final conclusion. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that testing footage. I enjoyed doing it. Um, like I said, I'm doing it anyway with the rest of any of the other knives, uh, but it's, it's, it takes a lot more time to record it because I got to edit and everything else. So I was very thoroughly impressed and, um, you know, kind of solidified my feelings toward uh the blade steel which is 154 cm just an excellent steel um it's it's so well balanced it it sharpens very nicely it uh takes a a, a good polish i i was able to start getting a polish on this knife without even hardly trying um it started taking a polish way quicker than most steels that are sharpened up uh this blade shape lent itself to uh, good slicing capabilities. Um, the the finish on here, I'm not in love with the finish. It's like a foggy satin finish. I would have much rather see either see the grind lines uh, in the blade or just give me a stonewashed blade. It just looks kind of dirty. See, that's what it looks like. Um, you you had this cool little swedge up here for decorative reasons 
Got a nice little forward troll right there. Uh, the jimping is is useful, especially when you're holding it like this. Um, you got Best Tech logo there, and there's Kombu's logo right there, and then Blaze Steel 154 CM. Um, close it up. Now, this is something else that that I that I was kind of enjoying. I hate the 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 G10 carbon fiber laminate stuff. But this right here, they're they're able to do it at an affordable price. This is G10 with carbon fiber like layered into it, as you can see. You can see more of the G10 right here in the middle. But this is uh, the uh, the blue variant they have. You can get it in the orange, in the green, and a black. And like I said, this is the blue. You can tell you can tell better in the daytime. I don't know if you can see the blue hues in there. And then you have the blue titanium pivot collar. Uh, T8 for the pivot, just a standard dome pivot. And you have a T6 pan head screw that's flush, countersunk into the scales. The scales aren't contoured, but they have these. It's very hard to show, but you can see this right here. This is like a milled, uh, there you go. You can see that milling right there. And they did it right here as well and up here let's see if I can show you all that all right here so it gives it somewhat of a contour and it is a little look there you go it is a little bit contoured um, and I will say you know it it wasn't the most comfortable knife I've ever tested but it it wasn't so bad to where I threw a, a pair of gloves on this hand now my hand sore yeah they're sore but um you know not not terrible um you have a milled titanium pocket clip that's also been anodized blue uh a, a titanium backspacer and this is a titanium liner lock um i like how they all the anodizing matches that's not the easiest task but that's usually why you see you know them going with blues a lot and those type and like the yellows easier to get to um, it remains centered through all the testing now the deployment you got flipper is riding on ceramic bearings so it's super smooth and it drops shut uh, you can spidey flick it that's a little hard because you you, you don't have a big hole and uh, it's it's kind of hard to get your finger right there I gotta like catch just the top part of that uh, that opening hole and same goes with using your thumb you can do it you just gotta kind of like bury your thumb in the crack <laughs> of that of that hole right there you can flip flick it out and you can slow roll it as well the detents more dialed for the flipping action, but you can do all those. And I, I love when you can have multiple uh, opening opening methods. Uh, flipper tab has very fine jimping, so it definitely catches on to the finger. Um, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. You do have a milled little ramp into the scales right there. Now being the scales are as wide as they are apart i can touch the blade if i really bury my finger in there and try to touch it but just running your finger like that you're not gonna you're not gonna come in contact unless you have very skinny fingers uh, the titanium liners have been skeletonized skeletonized to reduce weight you can see the holes in the the titanium scales and they got one down here as well so they're trying to get it as light as possible for the size knife it is and I think I think they did a good job let's see what the actual weight is on this knife if my batteries hadn't went dead yet four ounces for a 3.6 inch blade yep I think that's good um, let's see let's get some quick size comparisons and I'm gonna wrap this up good good size comparison knife would be the ontario rat model one those two are almost identical um we got another best tech best tech texel 
This is a good bit smaller. The Texel is a good bit smaller than the Falco. Um, two more. Got the CJRB Centros. Another good size comparison as far as length goes. And the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. Bare Knuckle is a little bit shorter. And the Centros is just about the same. So there you go. Um, let's see. What else did I miss? Your lockup. Uh, after all the testing, the lockup. It moved over a little bit, but I was hitting on top of that spine pretty darn hard, and a spine whacked pretty hard, so it's more at about 60% now. It was at 50%, uh, so I, I find that fine. And all that beating on this, absolutely. When I say no play, no play whatsoever. Love seeing that. Um, let's see what else. There was something else that I wanted to... So overall, the Ergo's... The ergos in this position were, were good, it, when, except when I was doing the wood wood carving. I noticed, like I said, that uh, this edge right here, where this milling is, it's not sharp, but when you're you know squeezing really hard, you do feel that. But like I said, it wasn't it wasn't enough to where I, I threw gloves on. Um, so that's that's my overall thoughts on the knife let's get some of my nitpicks and these are just nitpicks um first off the the flipper tab is i, I can't stand seeing a flipper tab like that it's pointy so you're you're catching that what you call because it's not high enough to where you can just lay the pad of your thumb on finger on there and pull it back it, it's it's not the most comfortable if i own this knife i'd probably grind it back to where it's facing that way um but at least you got the thumb thumb deployment method you can use. Next thing, um, like I said before, I don't I don't really like this satin. I'd rather see the 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 grind lines in it. I just think it looks a little sloppy like that. Kind of takes away from the beauty of the knife. Uh, <coughs> also, the factory edge. I may not have been the first person to get this, so I'm not gonna really talk about it. But it just didn't last long, so that's why I sharpened it. Um, and the my next biggest thing on this knife is the the access to the lock bar. Now they give you those two those two little uh, chamfers on the uh, liners, but it's just not enough space, and it, it it sits flush with the show side. So I just gotta like kind of push down with my thumb to push it over. And being it's a liner lock, you know you come in contact with this. So I wish they would have either taken this down some. Or, I don't know, yeah, just taking this down some to, to make it easier to disengage that lock. Um, and the last thing is, unfortunately, it is only right-hand tip, tip up carry. And usually, it, that's not a big deal in my opinion because I carry knives that are right-handed carry only in my left pocket all the time. Or I don't really move the clip ever. And uh, the only thing is, is it's, it's a little, it's a little bit dangerous when it comes to a flipper, because that flipper, that flipper comes in contact with something and opens that blade, then you're gonna have an open knife in your pocket. So it's not, not lefty friendly. Um, overall, though, I think it's, I think it's a, a, an excellent knife. If you can, if, if this flipper tab wouldn't, doesn't bother you, and the lock access, those are two main things. If those that doesn't bother you, um, I would definitely say get it. $160, I think that's fair after seeing what this knife can do and uh, the attractive nature of the knife. You have this nice, nice blade on here. It's 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 pretty pretty slicey. It can handle some abuse, and uh, I'm excited to to check out uh, this these other ones I got up for review. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to record that footage or not, depending on what how this how y'all what y'all think about this video and what kind of traction it gets. We'll see. All right, guys and girls, I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. Anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.